All right, here we go again. All right, so where we left off, we got the second normal form. All right, but we're not quite to third, right? We need to get to the third normal form. And, and what I've done here is I've kind of I've given some spreadsheets and and uh, what I will do is I will store I will send out a link to share this spreadsheet uh, for you guys to be able to see this uh, at your own pace. OK, but here we have the unnormalized form. Remember, OK, so this doesn't have any rows or this is the first normal form. Every cell has a single value and there is a primary key defined as, as we defined it in the last hour. And then we have the second normal form where none of our tables, none of our tables have partial dependencies. Everything is a full dependency, right? And actually, let me undo, let me get rid of the filter on this. And bold all that. So that's all our column headers. That's all our uh, column names. All right, our attribute names. All right, so. What next? We got to get to third normal form, right? Is is that well? First, is this in third normal form? By the way, the answer is no. <laughs> but why? What was third normal form? Do you remember that? <clears throat> Let's take a look. Yeah, transitive dependency. What's a transitive dependency? Anytime that there's some other intermediate column. So if we think transitive dependencies are kind of like that partial dependency, but instead of being dependent on a part of the primary key, they're dependent on some other column in the table. OK, so obviously this cannot be, this cannot have a transitive dependency. Right. There's no A determines B determines C here, right? Because there's no C. There's only two columns. Same thing here, right? D determines E, but there is no other column that it could uh, be dependent on. All right. So the fact that I tell you that there is a transitive dependency somewhere here suggests that it must be in this app info table. All right. So what do you think? Where do you think there is a transitive dependency going on here? Where G determines some other column and that other column determines some other column. Anyone? What do you think? Hint, look for places where it's always the same, where of column A value and column B value are always together. So it's like uh, where, well, like we might be tempted to think that age and language, well, 12 English Turkish, 12 English Turkish. Well, that, that, that seems to go together. All right, but no. Does that does age and language seem to be a, uh, something that would hold for all time? Probably not. L the size column. Does it determine something else, or does it determine like which side of the trans of the functional dependency would it go on? Right. 
developer ID and developer name. One one easy way to sometimes tell is what remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, okay, where are there places that we could store one column in our main table? So like for example, when we go back to this first normal form to second normal form, we wanted to store the app name only, but still have access to all this other data without duplicating it. Same thing with the username. We want to store the username once and have access to their email without having to store their email multiple times. So that's what we're trying to do here as well. So we're trying to say, let's store in our app info table, developer information, but let's store one column, one of these two columns, right? But still have access to that information by putting it the access to the other column by putting it in a separate table. OK, uh, let me duplicate this because we're about to change this guy up. All right. So which do you think is more? Long term that developer ID determines developer name or the developer name determines developer ID. So is it M N or yeah? Which do you think is more going to hold for all time? Yes, I would agree with that as well. I would agree that it seems more accurate that developer ID determines developer name, right? Uh, so by the way, Murat, you said yesterday you talked about creating the special uh, unique identifier. That's probably that's usually what goes on for a lot of situations where even like over here, user information is probably going to not have a username or user email be the primary key will probably have this some special user key. Same thing with the app because app name really isn't a solid good primary key long term because what if two people want to have the same app name, right? Uh, so we usually create a special key. Also, what we'll talk about later in a few weeks when we get there is going to be Strings like this, especially long strings like this, do not make for good primary keys because it's hard to search. All right. But for this simple example and for your group project, this is fine. Okay. So, but developer ID is probably some created key that they created. So, what we'll do is we'll say, okay, I want to take this. I'm going to put it over here. All right. I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to take uh, that, and I'm going to take this out. All right. So now this becomes our third normal form. We got rid of that transitive dependency. And guess what? This, this queries for making that happen. is pretty much the same thing, right? That now instead instead of um, it being a partial dependency, we're just getting rid of all columns that are the uh, right-hand side of any transitive dependencies. So we need to create a developer table. All right, we only need two columns. Uh, developer where we go and you could call it just ID. You don't have to call it developer ID, developer name. You could, it, it, it's entirely up to you. Okay, so it's an int and it's a uh, var char. I think I did 30. Okay, can't be null and we want to make it primary. Oh, and by the way, when you do this, you can click the preview SQL 
and basically just copy this query for the purposes of this right here. Okay. Assuming it's a correct, assuming it creates the table correctly. Okay. And then we want to insert into, right? We want to do that same thing as we've done before. Insert into uh, developer. Select distinct. Uh, this time now we want developer ID. Developer name. Um, but we're not selecting it from UNF, are we? Because if we do, if we do with UNF this time, it's going to give us an error, right? It's going to say, well, hey, I don't have that column in the developer table because that column doesn't exist in the developer table anymore. We dropped it from there. Now it exists in the app info table. All right, so now we have three rows inserted. Let's take a look at our data. Yep, there we go. There's our three rows. And we just need to do one more thing. We need to alter table app info, drop uh, developer. So now if we go back to the app info table and we look at its data, there's no developer name, but we still have the developer ID. So if we wanted to know who the developer name was for a certain game, we could still do that. We could say uh, select, select app name developer. Let me do it this way. Let me give um, app. Info a developer B a dot app name D dot name there a dot developer ID equals D dot ID. So if we want to see what the name was, there it is, right? Amazon, Amazon Mobile, Amazon Shopping, Amazon Mobile, Among Us, Intersloth, Netflix. Netflix, that makes sense, right? So we were able to get back that same information as it was before, just like it was in here, right? By doing a join, by joining the two tables together through that foreign key very key relationship okay all right so there now we have we have walked through how to go from unnormalized all the way through our first and second normal form into third so now we've taken this data set we've gotten to here notice some of the savings of the space situation so if i were to say okay i want to how many cells did i have values in 140 if i were to do that with the second Oh, where was it? Look at that. Just going from first normal form to second reduced the number of cells that I needed to hold space by half. All right. We're not going to get as big of a reduction on the third normal form, but that's okay. Uh, it up to right and actually there's a slight increase but there is 
there's a slight increase on this example, but that's only because I didn't put a lot of distinction here. All right, that's only because I didn't put a lot of uh, a lot of different rows here. On a bigger system, this would be a lot. This would actually end up being a, a savings of space. Okay. So basically, what we did was we took four off and added six. Okay. But we did get rid of potential update anomalies. All right. So. For your group project. You would need the unnormalized data set that would be. Something that looks like this. Okay. You'll need the ER diagram. Which I hope to have time to do that before the end of the day today. The SQL queries, that's what we just did. We just did. So what that would be is you need to create table. You need to insert into. You need to drop columns. OK. You need to write the queries to create your first normal form table. Including putting the primary key in there. You need to write the queries to create. Your second and your third normal form tables. You need to write the insert statements uh, to get the data from your lower form into your higher form tables. You need to write the drop column queries. All right. You can put those into a text document or into a Word document. It doesn't have to be. Uh, doesn't you don't 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 send me a bunch of dot query uh, text documents. All right. Uh, a view. Similar to that is something like what we did here, All right? Notice how I was able to rejoin. You know what I could do is a dot star. Notice this is the same as my second normal form table, isn't it? All right, second normal form. So here I was able to join these two tables together to reproduce a dynamic version of my second normal form table. Basically just do that same thing, but with all your tables to get back to back to this. OK, join all your tables together to get back to this. All right, one more thing, that's the view. Oh, I did say one thing. I was going to show you a slightly different way to do the same thing. OK. So you might notice these kind of these cells, these A through H cells kind of all go together. They're grouped, right? What if instead of doing this, making this, uh, you know, the unmerging and, you know, un instead of unmerging and uh, what is it? Uh, instead of unmerging and filling in and copying in, what if instead we just started off with this? We started off like this. Duplicate. Okay. So what I'm going to do, let me see here. I'm going to take this. Allows me to do. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's see. Excellent. Wait. Okay.
All right. So we start out like this. And we instead of unmerging all of that and duplicating all of that data, we start out with creating this second table, this app info table. All right. And we just unmerged this and, uh, and copied that only. Okay. So if we started out like this, so this, and we do make them actually no, this is. Let's get it that, and then this is this guy. Okay. So now this is an alternative way that we could start off as first normal form. Notice that for each of these, both of these tables, right, have single values in each cell, right? And there is a primary key defined for each. And all that we did was we said, let's take this stuff that seems to kind of go together, right? There's a grouping here. Among Us, Game, Cost, Age, Among Us, Game, Zero, Age, Nine, English, Size, Developer, ID, Developer, Name, kind of all goes together, all right? So let's take these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns and make them their own table. And that's what we did here, all right? was we kind of took that app info and made it its own table. And then we said, let's remove all the columns that are not the primary key of that table. So what we did was we said, OK, we're going to remove all of this. But we still need to keep this thing here. And we need to make sure that we separate it out. So among us goes here, among us goes here, so forth. Okay. So that's what we did by duplicating that. Right? So this is an alternative way that you could also have a first normal form starting point. Okay. So now notice that all of these are first normal form. They are not second normal form, right? Because here you do have a column that's dependent on part of the primary key. There is a partial dependency here between B and C. There's no partial dependency over here, but that doesn't mean it's third normal form just means that this table is already in second normal form to start with. And the same thing that we did before to get from first normal form to second normal form, we get rid of this partial dependency. And the way we would do that is by creating a user table. So notice the app info table just kind of comes along with us into second normal form. All right, so these are two different starting points for how we get from unnormalized to first normal form. Okay. Two different ways to get to first normal form. Second normal form will be the same for both. So both of these, once we apply the process for uh, getting rid of partial dependencies, we'll end up with the same second normal form setup which means we will also end up with the same third normal form as well. OK. All right, so that's two different ways to get there. All right. Now, one final thing that you'll need for your group project. So we already get this. We already got this. We already got two, three. We got one, three, and four. Now we need an ER diagram. OK. One thing that I use is I use diagrams.net. Uh, it's also, uh, it used to be called uh, draw.io. It's an online, uh, it's an online tool that's free. You could do it, you could also do it using PowerPoint. There's all kinds of ways that you can do this.
Uh, let's see, I want you can tell that I want entity relationship. Uh, let's call it. I want to pick the right folder. Let's see. Where are you? There you are. What are we, database? Where are you, database? There you are. Uh, 2021. Data examples. Oh. All right. Let's see. Let's get let's see. Let's get rid of this stuff here. So basically we need a an entity for every table we have. So we have four tables. Right? We need four entities, right? So we have four entities. We need to name them all basically what we would name them. So let's go for the easy ones first, the user, app, and developer. Oh, that seems weird. What on? What on earth are you doing over here? All right, let's go with user info. Okay, and you could just name the attributes, whatever they are. So uh username user email okay. uh app info app name type and all the others i don't remember what all i did cost Developer had a developer ID. A name. OK, and then finally. You wouldn't want to call this something that means something, so you could call it downloads because that's what it represents. You could call it the user app table because that it represents a combination between the two, right? And it would have the user name. App name. And actually, let me change this to make it more consistent. All right, so now we've created all of our entities, but we forgot the R part, right? We don't have the R part set up yet. So we have an entity and we need a relationship. Well, how are the different entities related to each other? Right? How is the user – does there exist a relationship between the user and the app. Does any column in here point to a column in here? No. Hmm. Maybe let's go for an easy one first. An easy one that we can see is that the app 
and the developer through the developer ID column has a relationship, right? How are is the app and the developer related to each other? Is it a one to many? Is it a many to many? Is it a one to one? Right, one to many because one developer creates many apps. In our, in our current example, so we do have a let's see, not a zero to many. There's a one to many, but it's not the one I want. Uh, where are you? Okay. So these symbols are important. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to show you why in just a moment. Uh, come on, is there a way to? This thing is not in. I put it on there. Well, it's like going the wrong way. So weird. That's not what I want. Okay. I wanted to show you these symbols because there's two ways that we've talked about this before. Where are you? Text. I want text. So this represents zero dot dot star. Okay. And this is one dot dot one or just one either way. OK, and remember what this meant was. This means that if we have an app, we require they must have a developer. OK, there must be a developer. An app must have only one developer. A developer can develop many apps. Or we can develop zero apps. We don't. We can have a developer in our system that doesn't have any apps out there yet. I'm not sure why we would have that, right? But it could happen, I guess. But we could have a developer in our system that can have zero to many apps. If you wanted to say, no, 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 I want to require that developers must have apps. Like we're not going to keep track of any developers that don't have any apps. Uh, we can change this side from a not required to a required many like that and that would change it from zero to one like that okay so that's what these symbol means so we've talked about the numbers there's also a symbolic way that we can show this as well this line like this means required this kind of a kind of a spread piece symbol kind of thing this three prong thing means many this line means required. This line that's closer to the um, entity means one. It's a one sided relationship. It's a one relationship. OK, that circle meant. Um, not required. OK. So we got developer and app. Who else has relationships over here? What else has relationships? Well, does the app table and the user table have a relationship? 
is there a column here that matches a column here? Is there a column here that matches some column here? No, so as far as the way that you might draw this now, Suleiman, what we what you'll find out when we start talking in in let's see which logical design. When we get to logical design, you'll find out that there actually could be a relationship represented here between user and app uh, to make it more simple to understand, but we'll get there. Right, the app user table and the user has a relationship, absolutely, right? And the app user and the app table have a relationship, right? So, we take this, so user and app has a relationship, or sorry, user and app user has a relationship. So we have, what type of relationship? Okay. Okay, so app user to user, how is that related? Uh, it's okay, Suleiman, I thought that you were just thinking ahead actually, because we're, we're going to see that it's actually much more simple to explain by actually taking this, this entity out completely. But we'll see that, we'll see that once we get to logical design. So we know there's a relationship between user app and user info and user app and app info. But what type of relationship? Is it one to many? Is it okay? So it's Many to many, so many app in app users can have many users, right? Is that what you're thinking? So, how does that work? User has, right, user has many apps, but can a user have, and user can have many apps over here, but can this have more, um, how can we, how can we say this? Can, when a user downloads an app, can that be more, can, I, can that be more than one user? It's, it's, it's hard, it's, it's a little bit difficult um, because of the way that we did this. Yeah, the app user can only point to one user, right? Because this can only be one user. This username cell can only have one user that it points to, right? So the way that we would do this is a user uh, app. I do not get it here. I guess I can't move it, man. This sticks. What? It does not, I do not like the way this thing is working today. It seems to be weird, weirding me out. All right, I'm just gonna leave it like this for now because I, I don't have time to mess with it. So a user can download many apps, sure, but a user app uh, representation where it, this represents a time that a user downloaded an app. All right. 
So it must have only one user associated with that, and it should also do the same thing. over here. OK. That a user app, which represents. So if we think about what this table represents, the user app, it represents a time that a user downloaded an app. One user downloaded one app. Now that same user could download another app. That's OK. And that same app could be downloaded by another user. That's OK. But each row in this table represents a time that a user downloaded one app. So one user downloaded one app. So that's why one user downloaded one app. Okay. We should definitely put the required on each side of that because if we have a user that downloads an app, we should have that user in our system. We should have that app in our system. We probably should not require that users download any apps, right? Because what if the user doesn't have any apps? That's OK. And we probably should also not require that an app be downloaded. So this is, this would be an ER diagram. I'll download this uh, uh, PDF or ping rather, a PNG. You can export as a PNG. And I'll give you guys access to this, by the way. Okay. And as I said before, one thing that we'll see is that actually a better way to draw an ER diagram, a final ER diagram, would be to get rid of this table because really what does this represent? This represents a many to many relationship between these two, right? Right, exactly. That really what this user app table represents is a many to many relationship where users and apps have a uh, have a many to many style relationship where many users can download many apps. Right? And that's what we'll see when we talk about logical design. Okay? Well, I ran right up against the time today, guys. So I, I planned on this being an early day, but I guess not. So, yeah, are there any other questions about how to do this? So I've walked you through basically how to do all four items here. Okay? So you guys should be pretty set to go as far as how to do this. Now you just need to go out and actually get it done. All right. Are there any other questions? Or comments? So this would be a more understandable final ER diagram. All right. Well, have a good afternoon. Uh, next week we will talk about midterm because we got a midterm uh, we got a midterm um, date tentative date going so we'll talk about midterm expectations next week all right thanks guys have a good afternoon and I'll see you on Monday